Hello and welcome to the first video in this unit about Europe. This one's about the physical geography of Europe. So Europe is part of a large landmass called Eurasia, which we don't call a continent sometimes, and some people do in some places. But it's really this large peninsula, you know, uh, a body of land that's surrounded by water on three sides because it just juts out of Asia over, you know, Mediterranean Sea to the bottom and then uh, North Sea to the top uh, and then the Atlantic Ocean on the western side. So you can see here that Europe is really in sort of four major areas. You've got blue, which is northern Europe, which has got Great Britain and all those countries in it, the Scandinavian countries. You've got western Europe, which includes France and Germany and a number of other smaller countries in here like Switzerland. Uh, you've got southern Europe, which is Spain and Portugal and Italy and the Balkan, most of the Balkan Peninsula. And then you've got red, which is eastern Europe, which is mostly set off from western Europe. Um, having to do with the time period of the Cold War when these were mostly communist countries. So the topography of Northern Europe, uh, Northern European Plain is one you got to know about. And it's a flat area that extends from France through the Netherlands, Germany, Poland, and into Russia. And the Northern European Plain has very good soil called uh, Chernozem. But you can see that here, this right along there is the European Plain has a lot of peninsulas. Europe is a peninsula that has a lot of peninsulas. There's the Scandinavian Peninsula, Jutland, Iberian Peninsula, Italian Peninsula, and the Balkan Peninsula. And we'll do more of actually looking at those in a map activity. But the Scandinavian Peninsula is in northern Europe. It's got Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Uh, and this peninsula is surrounded by the Barents Sea, the Baltic Sea, the Norwegian Sea, and the North Sea. So again, it's a lot of peninsulas on peninsulas. You can see that right here all the seas surrounding these peninsulas. And down here is the rest of Europe. This is Denmark over here. You can see where this is in Europe. Fjords. Fjords are steep, narrow, U-shaped valleys. So you got these valleys that have been carved out by a glacier, glacier, and they're found in Norway on the Scandinavian Peninsula because this area had a lot of glaciers in it during the last ice age. It's pretty far north, so that makes a lot of sense. You can see one here. It's really cool. I really want to go see them in real life. But carved out by glaciers and now water has run up into it as the sea levels rose. Jutland, this is a, a unique peninsula that's the country of Denmark, covers the majority of this area, and it's just below where those Scandinavian countries were. The Iberian Peninsula is where Portugal and Spain are, and so together Portugal and Spain make up the Iberian Peninsula. And you can see that right here. Here's Spain, here's Portugal, and actually there's a little bit down here owned by Britain, which is interesting. The Italian Peninsula is where Italy is. And you can see that right here in this southern part of Europe, including, kind of looks like a boot, that's what everyone calls it, the boot kicking the ball, and then you've also got um, this island here, which is sometimes, it's not considered part of the peninsula, but it is controlled by Italy. The Balkan Peninsula is a unique area that shows up a lot in world history, so this is really worth knowing, especially for next year. Um, it's surrounded by the Adriatic Sea, the Aegean Sea, and the Black Sea, and you can see, haha, <laughs> right here, that it's this sort of lumpy area, but it is surrounded by seas on three sides. It's that blue area. There's some strategic waterways that are useful for different things. Um, it's an, a strategic waterway is a narrow body of water that provides a transportation or a sea route. And some examples in Europe are the English Channel, the Strait of Gibraltar, and the Dardanelles and the Bosphorus. And we'll take more of a look at those later. Because the English Channel uh, separates the island of Great Britain from France. And there's this really narrow spot called the Strait of Dover, which is 21 miles wide, and people swim it. People actually swim all the way across from Calais to Dover, right there. That's a little tiny area, but you can see here it's a small body of water that runs between two important places. The channel is actually a tunnel that goes underneath that whole thing, as in they dug underneath a sea to get from Britain to France to provide a train tunnel that goes underneath, which is very cool. You can see that here going from Calais over to uh, Dover, and into the United Kingdom. So you can take a train under the water, huge under the water tunnel. We see that going here through some of the bedrock and these cool areas. There's lots of cool research on this too. The Strait of Gibraltar connects the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea, and it also separates the continents of Europe and Africa. Um, but at its narrowest point, it's really tiny. So it's another way you can control trade if you control this spot. So Great Britain wanted that. See how small that is? And you can see uh, the joining of the two major bodies of water. And you can see here that um, Spain controls this, and then Britain controls this. The little tiny uh, pointy bit at the end. The Rock of Gibraltar um, is actually, because it's an overseas territory of the UK, even though the UK is really far away, but it's been like that for 300 years. 
It's where, and monkeys live there. I don't know if you knew that. It's one of the only places monkeys live in Europe, is on the Strait of Gibraltar. Having uh, been there, it's like down closer to a warm region where they would live. Um, the Bosphorus and Dardanelles uh, separate Europe from Asia Minor, which is Turkey. And Part of Turkey is in Europe, and the other part is located in Asia because of the history of the Ottoman Empire, which we will talk about in world history too. But the important thing there is that the Turkey controls the trade that runs through there because it has both sides. Some islands in Northern Europe are Great Britain, Ireland, Iceland. Uh, and Great Britain and Ireland are actually two major islands on what's called an archipelago, which is a small group of islands and together they're called the British Isles. So there's Great Britain which is the large one um, and then there's Ireland which is off to the side. Because Great Britain is made up, it's on a single island and it's one country still, although that's now in, in, in doubt. The UK is composed of Wales, Scotland, England and the northern part of the island of Ireland. And Scotland almost broke away very recently but that vote did not go through. There's some islands in the Mediterranean Sea that are worth knowing, and that's Sicily, Corsica, Sardinia, and Crete. These are There's lots of islands, but these are the really large ones. The Alps are a mountain chain that's located in northern Italy, Switzerland, Austria, and France. And the Alps are not very long, but um, they are fairly tall, and the tallest of them is Mont Blanc at 15,774 feet. It's pretty sweet. You can see that here on this map, you can see where these mountains are. They sort of curve around Italy and provide this unique plain down here in northern Italy, which is a very highly developed region. And then over up here is like Switzerland, and Switzerland's built up in the mountains. It's very cool. And those are the Alps that you see people skiing in all the time. And this is a beautiful view of, I think that's the Matterhorn Mountain right there, and a, a, a chalet house up there. The Pyrenees, another mountain chain, separate the Iberian Peninsula from France. Iberian Peninsula, remember that's Spain and Portugal, separates them from France. And here you can see that. Here's Spain down in here, and you've got the Pyrenees Mountains, and then France is above there. And a lot of times, this is how things are separated in Europe, is not by some arbitrary line, though there are arbitrary lines, but by major geographical uh, you know, landform features, like mountains and rivers. Europe is in the middle and high latitudes, so it has lots of different kinds of climates. It covers a lot. But northern Europe, there's tundra and subarctic, really cold stuff uh, up in those Scandinavian countries uh, with those fjords. Most of western Europe has a marine west coast climate, and southern Europe has a Mediterranean climate. So Europe's climate is unique. The wind currents and ocean currents have a huge impact on the actual climate of the place. Because there's a thing called the North Atlantic Drift, which is an ocean current, the water that's running through, coming up from the warmer regions of the world and comes whoop, over from the coast of North America into Europe. And by carrying the warm water up that far, it actually heats all of Europe and keeps Europe from being encased in snow for much of the year. Um, that's why Britain is really far north, but they don't actually get all that much snow. Um, Europe is also warmed by wind currents called the westerlies, and that results in Europe being this uniquely warm spot up high in the latitudes. And that's all for this PowerPoint, but we'll come back and see more.